relief for some neighbors in Stockton, California, where police have arrested a man they say was on a mission to kill. Six men were killed and a woman injured in a series of shootings over the past year that left Stockton on edge. Investigators believe this arrest prevented what would have been another killing. CNN's Camilla Bernal has a story. Amra Boris, we have been following this story for days, and now authorities say they believe they have their suspect. This is 43-year-old Wesley Brownlee of Stockton, and what authorities are saying is that they were able to arrest this man thanks to two things. The first being the tips and the help from the community, and the second being old-fashioned police work. They say they were able to zero in on one possible suspect thanks to all of these tips, and they began following this man, trying to figure out exactly where he was going, trying to see if there were any patterns to all of this. And the chief of police in Stockton saying this man was on a mission to kill. Saturday at around 2 in the morning, they were following him. They say he left his house. He was in dark areas, going to parks, stopping, looking around, then moving again, and they decided to arrest him. Uh, they say that he was wearing all black, that he had a mask around his neck, and also that they found uh, a gun. He was carrying a gun. Here is now what the mayor of Stockton, Kevin Lincoln, is saying about all of this. We will use every resource at our disposal to make sure the people of our city are protected and feel safe and that no parent has to worry about taking their kids to a park, that nobody would have to worry about looking over their shoulder when they go to the grocery store, and that our unhoused population here in the city of Stockton will be able to rest a little bit easier tonight as we take the next steps towards getting them help and healing in their life. And authorities say they will announce the charges on Tuesday when this man is first uh, set to appear in court. In terms of the motive, the chief of police still saying they do not know and do not have a motive. Amra Boris. Camilla Bernal, thank you. And joining me now is law enforcement analyst and former NYPD police detective Tom Verney. Uh, good morning to you, Tom. This is such a chilling story, especially when you hear the police chief say, quote, the suspect was on a mission to kill, that he was out hunting. I'm just curious to know how investigators are so confident that they prevented another, kill another killing. Good morning, uh, Mara and Boris. Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> This is the stuff that TV movies are made of, right? Uh, how chilling would this be to live in a neighborhood where you find out that numerous people are being stalked, basically, and, and killed for some unknown reason? And uh, and in the reporting uh, that was just mentioned, uh, this was a, a case that was brought together by literally old school police tactics, right? Uh, you know, today's day where we have, you know, all, all sorts of electronic means and DNA and all those types of things, which may also play a part in this case at some point. It's the, you know, piecing together uh, critical pieces of, of information, getting feedback from the community, which in many, many ways in, in all parts of the country, that's how crimes are solved is when, you know, something happens, the police put information out there, they put out a, basically a, a help, you know, lifeline, uh, and then the, the community responds. And then they put together some sort of a plan you know, or an operation to try to to rein this person or persons in. So yeah, this this was a, a really bizarre uh, and, and frightening case. Uh, yeah. I, I I'm sure you know the first thing they want to check is to also make sure this person was working alone. Uh, there's no evidence to suggest otherwise, thankfully. Uh, but once we you know now have zeroed down on the suspect, then now they're going to start to piece together all these other pieces of information. Well. And, I uh, and speaking of piecing the, the the stuff together, I mean, how much was it invest with? How much was it uh, relying on the tips that were coming in? When you because when you look at the surveillance video, all you see is the back of uh, the suspect. You don't see a face. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, again, the uh, based on the pattern, and that, and that's another part that they put together as well. The pattern of behavior. You know, 
serial killers, especially ones like this, don't certainly don't want to be caught. They want to be able to continue for whatever bizarre reason that might be. And so they, but eventually they do develop certain patterns of behavior, right? So based on the tips that are given by the public, uh, days that people see someone like this, you know, uh, the way that they're acting, what they're wearing and so forth, you know, these little crumbs of information by themselves don't necessarily mean all that much, right? But when you start to connect the dots, it starts to add up to, to areas that they can concentrate on, um, descriptions of, of people that they're given that they can look at based on what they look like, based on what they're wearing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's exactly what happened here. And, and thank goodness, because uh, yeah, who knows? And, and the other part of this, too, is quite frankly, how long has this been going on? Did this just start in you know a year and a half ago in April of 2021, as the reporting was, was suggesting? Right. Or has this been going on even longer? Yeah. You know, I, what made this person snap? Yeah, that's wonder, what they're going to be looking into. Right. I wonder if they will connect him to um, other shootings or murders. We're going to have to leave it there, but it's a really uh, fascinating yeah. story. And thank goodness they were able to get him when they did. Tom Verney, thank you very much. Yes.